Yeah. Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for this um, 2021 orientation session for new graduate students. We're so happy that you've joined us for this event. And um, just a reminder too, that we have all of our other events posted on our orientation website. If they're not there, they will be there very shortly. If you've happened to miss any of them, all the information is recorded and available for you. Um, just a quick housekeeping note, if you have any questions, I think we'll try to do question and answers um, at the end of each um, presenter. So just put those in the Q&A, not in the chat, so we can just monitor them all in one spot and, and we'll answer those as each speaker finishes speaking. Um, I think other than that, I would like to do um, a little land acknowledgement to recognize where we are all very fortunate to to um, go to school and learn and teach and, and live. So I'd like to begin by saying that I am not Indigenous. My heritage extends to England, but I, like many other settler people, have benefited greatly from living on Turtle Island. Our university, both Trent Peterborough and Trent Durham GTA, is located in the traditional and treaty territory of the Mississauga Anishinaabe. I believe that it's not only important to recognize the Mississauga for caring for and teachings about the earth and our relations, but to also honor those teachings through our interactions today and always. Nearly 100 years ago, Canada and seven Mississauga and Chippewa First Nations signed agreements that became known as the Williams Treaties. These agreements were intended to be the foundation upon which sovereign peoples would build a common relationship but led to long-standing disputes about compensation, settlement, and harvesting. In light of this history and understanding our role as treaty people, let's dedicate ourselves to moving forward in the spirit of partnership, collaboration, and reconciliation as we learn together and contemplate the possibilities that lay ahead. All right, without further ado, I'm going to pass over the screen, the presentation to Dr. James Connolly, who's our Dean of Graduate Studies. Thank you very much, Laurie. So if that screen is visible to presenters, can you see that, Laurie? Yeah, that looks yep. great. So it's my pleasure and privilege to welcome you all to Graduate Studies at Trent University. Um, my presentation is fairly short. It's just going to go over some basic information about the School of Graduate Studies, some information about um, uh, the organization of graduate studies at Trent, uh, the location of some of the facilities, um, information about, uh, for those of you that hold GTA appointments, a bit about um, what that entails, as well as general information about your life as graduate students at the university. Uh, as Laurie suggested, if you have any questions during the presentation, by all means, put them in the chat window. We'll endeavor to uh, answer them uh, as we can. So you are, uh, are joining a community of over 900 active graduate students, and we are very pleased to welcome you. There are um, just over 300 new students starting or, or have started this spring and fall. So we are a, a, a sort of a large community of um, both the faculty, administrators, and students focused on ensuring that you get the best graduate education possible. Trent offers uh, almost 30 degrees with almost 40 different streams as well as some graduate diplomas. And there are about 150 graduate students um, who are uh, leaving the university with various graduate degrees each year. The School of Graduate Studies at Trent uh, manages um, the instruction of both doctoral level degrees, thesis-based master's degrees, course-based master's degrees, or professional degrees, as they're sometimes called, and graduate diplomas. So those of you who are coming to Trent are uh, enrolled in one of, the, one of these programs. Oops, sorry, my mouse is moving. Uh, the, the management of this, and you will get to know uh, some, uh, if not all, of the staff uh, as well as myself in the Office of Graduate Studies. So uh, these names may already be familiar to some of you um, uh, because you've interacted or begun your interaction with some uh, of, of these very uh, competent and generous people. Uh, I'm James Conley, I'm the Dean of Graduate Studies. I'm here acting as Dean for a year uh, while the, uh, the current Dean of Studies, uh, Dean of Graduate Studies is on uh, a research leave. Uh, Stephanie Belfry is the manager. Um, uh, and there's Lori, who you've met, and Aaron and Jesse and Jessica and Sharon and Jane. These are these are all uh, individuals who, at some point in your your time at Trent, I'm sure you will interact with. Um, we are located uh, 
uh, on the Simons campus, um, where many of you will also um, be, lo be located. For those of you unfamiliar or haven't yet been able to visit uh, Trent, this is the, the, the largest of our three campuses. If, uh, if you are new to Trent, um, we are just south of the Battle Library in the Student Center. So we're located on the southwest end of the campus. So graduate studies, the location of graduate studies is there circled in red. It's in the um, uh, Blackburn Hall com Administrative Complex. Um, so it's, it's as you enter in the university on the West Bank side, it's sort of you'll find it as one of the first administrative buildings on the right. But if you, for whatever reason, find yourself around the Battle Library or Student Center, head south along the river, and you will also find the School of Graduate Studies. Uh, we're Suite 115. So by all means, uh, if you need some administrative help, uh, uh, you, you can certainly come and visit us. I'll also point out that we have two other campuses, Trail College, um, or on, on uh, in Peterborough, there's also Trail College, which is the Graduate College, and Michael Eman, who I believe is also here on our um, on our talk today, is uh, uh, is that correct, Lori? I, I don't have my my grid up. Michael's here, yes. Uh, so yes, Michael. Michael's here. Sorry. So you will meet Michael, um, you know, uh, as principal of Trail College. Uh, some of you may uh, have uh, supervisors or classes or GTA appointments at our Durham at our Durham GTA campus south of Peterborough as well. So we are sort of with, within the, uh, the region of, of sort of South Central Ontario, we have these three locations, Simons Campus, Peterborough Campus, and Durham GTA. So a bit of information about uh, your, uh, your sort of position as a graduate student at the university. So you're, you're within a program, of course, and each program has a graduate director and administrative assistant. And these are really your first points of contact. So if you have questions about um, courses or your um, sort of administrative aspects of your program, by all means, you should meet your graduate director and the graduate administrative assistant associated with your program. So uh, some of you undoubtedly have already had uh, quite a lot of interaction with those two individuals, but by all means, get, get to know them because they are going to be the people who have uh, the best source of information about the specifics of your individual degree program. To remind you, graduate students are registered for 12 months across three terms. So there are three graduate terms. There's the graduate fall term, which we're just beginning in this September, the winter term, and then the spring summer term. So you remain, unlike undergraduate students, uh, you remain full-time students throughout the, winter, throughout the summer months as well. And also to remind you, um, if there are changes in registration status or you wish to make a change to your registration registration status, so applications for a leave of absence if you need to be away from the university for an extended period of time, a change of program stream, uh, if you want to change to part-time or shift from part-time to full-time, these all require applications. So you should familiarize yourself if you haven't already uh, with um, uh, the uh, School of Graduate Studies website because for instance just looking at the, um, the form page gives you links to all the forms that you might need to do this so if you first familiarize yourself with what uh, the, the procedures and the forms are um, th this will sort of expedite um, changes that you uh, changes to your registration for instance that you, you might um, you might be needing to do at some point so um, by all means have a have a look through the different aspects and different pages of the School for Graduate Studies page. Um, their own website at trentgsa.ca. Um, they're the um, uh, they're acting on your behalf. They're they're uh, your member. All graduate students are members of the GSA, so uh, that ranges from social events to um, other other sorts of uh, events that are of interest to graduate students. So, by all means. Uh, get to know your graduate student association representatives, have a look at the website, um, because this is also an important sort of uh, a means which you can uh, become uh, quickly in, and uh, fully integrated into the university community. So I'll just now uh, say a few words about uh, graduate teaching assistants and academic assistants, or GTAs and AAs. Um, some of you will hold GTA appointments, some of you uh, will hold AA appointments. These are both opportunities for gaining teaching experience at the university, um, and it helps support our undergraduate teaching mission as well. You, you are assistants to, uh, to faculty that are delivering the, um, the instruction.
content to undergraduates. And it also, of course, provides some financial support for those of you that hold GPAs uh, for helping to support you as graduate students. However, it does come with uh, some expectations. You do you 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 are actually entering into a dual role. You're both a graduate student and also an instructor. You're an employee of the university. So you're working in the classroom. You're working and assisting in laboratories. You're helping with marking. You're also behind the scenes uh, assisting instructors in uh, course organization. So uh, in that role, you are uh, sort of a expected to act and behave as an employee and there's some expectations of that role as well which is which is also a great learning experience in terms of how universities function from the delivery perspective to assist you in this you you are members of a union um, the canadian union of public employees 3908 so you will have a union representative um, so by all means get to know your union representatives and the role and function of your union that represents you in this role as an employee of the university um, uh, if you uh, do hold the GTA or AA or are employed in other capacities as a graduate student, perhaps as a, a laboratory research assistant, there are some mandatory training modules that you also have to do that would be delivered through uh, the MyTrent portal. Um, these are health and safety modules that you're, were required as an employer to ensure that our employees are properly trained and aware of various Ministry of Labor requirements that range from hazardous materials training to health and safety awareness training to violence and harassment training uh, to protection of privacy training uh, and uh, uh, an Ontario specific act for accessibility for Ontarians with disabilities. So you will be um, informed of these um, requirements before you begin employment with, uh, uh, with the university and uh, pointed to where you can learn these. Most of these are available through self-directed modules on uh, the MyTrent or Blackboard websites that you'll become familiar with. Um, we do, um, I'm not sure if anybody else is speaking about coronavirus, but do pay attention please to the university's coronavirus policies. Um, there are vaccination policies um, that um, are now in place for the university. So um, th this um, will be uh, provided to you in terms of information about how this is working um, and what the requirements are via websites and also on my trend. So um, the, the, the place to look is uh, trendu.ca coronavirus for the latest information, uh, as well as if you're not vaccinated, vaccine clinics um, and dates and details for how to access those. So do also uh, bear that in mind, please. Uh, so, yes, I realized that was uh, probably fast. Um, I hope, you, hope you're able to keep up. Please ask any questions in the chat window. We'll do our best to answer them, but welcome to the university. We are here to help and we are focused on ensuring that you have the best graduate experience possible. And we're really pleased that you have chosen to join us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, James. Sorry, I was typing away the questions and answers. We have had several questions, which are great. Keep them coming and we'll try to keep up or we can answer them out loud at the end. I don't think any of the questions that we had there were specific to your presentation, James, so we were just answering away. Um, so thank you for those. Thank you for the presentation. And next, um, Dr. Michael Kahn, who's our Provost and Vice President of Academic, is joining us. Great, thanks, Laurie, and good morning, everyone, and welcome. Um, welcome to all our returning students, th those students who have studied at Trent before. And of course, a very special welcome to all of those who are new to Trent. I actually just joined Trent about a year ago, and like myself, you will soon realize what a wonderful place this is to work and study. I'm actually originally from Trinidad and Tobago, did all my university education in Canada, and then worked in the UK for a number of years. So it's really exciting to see all of you here today from all from countries from all over the world. And we look forward to you joining us at the um, Trent campuses as soon as possible. And um, you will also find that grad school is one of the most enjoyable and exciting times as a university student. When compared to your undergrad, grad school is more specialized. Most of your courses and research should be in an area that you are extremely passionate about. At Trent, you will be taught and supervised by professors who are experts in their field. Learn as much as you can from them. They too are passionate about their areas of expertise and would value sharing their knowledge with you. But also they would be interested in hearing your ideas, learning from you 
as you work together in advancing knowledge. Although graduate education tends to be highly specialized, be sure to involve yourself in as many projects and initiatives as you can. Employers are indeed looking for people who are experts in specific areas, but more importantly, those who can think outside the box and work in multidisciplinary teams to come up with unique solutions. So by exposing yourself to different areas, you are able to bring new ideas to the table, enhancing your own creativity, and this will serve you well is to come. So let me end by wishing you all the best. Thank you for choosing Trent and enjoy your experience as a grad student. Take care and all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michael. Um, next, we have the president of the Trent Graduate Student Association, Sebastian Johnston Lindsay is here. I hope he's here. <laughs> you still there, Sebastian? There he is. Good. Sorry about that. I just had to change my microphone. Can you <laughs> no worries. Go oh. ahead. Hello, everybody. And uh, thank you to everyone who's spoken so far and everyone who's here. It's, um, it's my pleasure to be here. My name is Sebastian Johnson Lindsay. I'm the president of the Trent Graduate Student Association, and I'm also a PhD candidate uh, in Canadian Studies at the Frost Center for Canadian and Indigenous Studies here at Trent. Um, so not only am I the president of the Student Association, but I'm also a fellow student. And I think that that's a, that's a good way to start off here. Um, but you might be asking yourself, and I appreciate uh, my, uh, James's uh, plug of the TGSA in his, in his presentation. I think that's, that's important. And uh, it sort of underscores some of the things and the possibilities of the TGSA and what we are here to do, and which is to represent you to the school administration in as many ways as possible, and to be your voice on campus uh, for any issues that that you see fit. Our main goal is to advocate on behalf of um, support, uh, whether that's financially or in other ways, or and um, and to educate our, our members. And as a graduate student, you are a fee-paying member of the Graduate Student Association, and as such, we're responsible to you, and we're here to help you in whatever way you want to see transpire on campus. Um, so all, the, all this being said, um, how do we support you? We have two main bursaries, um, so monetary bursaries. We have the academic bursary, uh, linked to which is, can be found on the uh, incoming, in, incoming student information page, which has been put together by Grad Studies. And we have the emergency bursary fund, which we're, both of which we're working on sort of looking to make more accessible I think that it's uh, it's uh, really important that we you know offer the support to you in a way that is accessible and open and transparent, and so we're working rather hard to to ensure that that is the case. And links to that again can be found on the on both our website and on the information page. Um, and in addition to liaising with um, with the administration here, we also have close ties with other student groups um, and working groups here on campus, including the union, which you are part of as a graduate uh, teaching assistant. So that's QP 3908. Um, we have representatives which sit on our board from, from QP, and we're constantly working with them to ensure that we're aware of any labor issues that might be coming up uh, in your role as a, as a GTA. And yeah, I'm just trying to think now of what I haven't said in the past, which I'm trying to think of new information which hasn't already been recorded and put out there. Um, but if you're interested in getting involved in student government, I can't stress enough how important it is that we get participation from especially new, new graduate students. Um, whether you're in a one-year program or a two-year program, there are open positions. Uh, there's, a, there's a page on our website. And one of, one of the most important positions on our board are the program representatives, most of which are occupied by first year incoming students who want to get involved in their student government and advocate on behalf of their graduate programs. And the reason that the, some of the most important is because they're on the ground in, the, in their department, hearing what's going on right on the floor. They're actively engaged in uh, coursework, generally speaking, and they have that connection on the ground, right? Like me, I'm a PhD candidate. I'm 
I'm no longer in classrooms, I have peers, but I'm not there, right? So I think it's really, really crucial, especially if you're an incoming student to get to try and get involved. And that's how the Graduate Student Association builds its institutional memory. And that's how we continue to pass along that knowledge uh, as, as, years, as years go by and people graduate. And so if you have any questions on how to get involved in the TGSA, there's, uh, you can email me, I'm the president TGSA at trentu.ca. Um, you can email the VP Internal Affairs, uh, which is VP Internal Affairs at trentu.ca. Um, or you can email the general one, which is simply GSA at trentu.ca. I can uh, put those in the chat if anyone's interested, or you can message and I'll answer in the, in the Q&A. Um, but I, I, I really do want to welcome everyone here to, to their graduate program and to uh, kind of put a face to what can sometimes be a rather um, invisible entity on campus, which is the TGSA, and um, to really stress the fact that we're here to support you in whatever way you want to see happen. Um, we're, not, we're not just a political group. We also put on um, you know, fun social events. Um, we're always looking for new ideas. And so if you are looking to get involved, there's, that's another way to do so, uh, just to come and you know, meet us and uh, get your voice heard on campus. And um, I, I believe that's it for now. I'm just uh, racking my mind for any other tidbits of knowledge that I can pass along. But I just wanted to be very clear that we're always very, very happy to hear from our members and that we're here to represent you and advocate on your behalf for the administration and any other um, bodies that you might want to see. Great. Thank you, Sebastian. We did have a question or two there about the TGSA, like getting involved with it. Um, I was answering some questions, doing some logistics. Did you provide that or is that something you're going to put into the chat on if people wanted to like go for a position next year or something like that? Um, and someone else was asking for the emails that Oh, yeah, you, you must have referenced. So yeah, if you could pop in, in that into the chat. And this is a little bit off topic, but we've had quite a number of questions about people asking people that have been assigned to GTA for the fall term, and they're trying to get their, um, their staff account. So that this is a little bit of a process, it can take between seven and 10 days, because the paperwork you've submitted has to go the undergraduate department, it comes to our office for processing, and then it goes to um, to payroll from there and then it goes on to IT. So thank you for your patience. I know there's um, quite a few, I've answered a lot of emails about that the last few days as well and people are asking. So just to let you know, it, it's not set up yet, but it will be, I would give it another two, three days and hopefully most of them will be, but they're with payroll now and they still have to go to IT. So sorry, a little off track there, but I know a lot of people are curious about that and anxious to get um, their staff account and get their mandatory training done. So um, yeah, the question are still coming in here. I don't know if these are ones that I haven't had a chance to read them yet, whether these are related to the TGSA or where is the GSA located? Oh, you got that one, Sebastian? Okay, great. Um, I think we'll just keep answering these um, by typing, unless there's something that we think that everybody should be aware of. And then we'll we'll take a break after our next speaker and we'll talk about them live. Um, so I am going to throw it over to Dr. Michael Eamon now. He's the principal at Trail College, our downtown campus here in Peterborough. Michael. Thanks, Lori. Hi, everyone. Great to see you all. Um, I'm just going to take a few minutes of your time. Don't worry, you, it won't be, you know, you won't be too onerous, I hope. I'm going to talk a little bit about Trail College and its role in graduate studies. I work very closely with James, Laurie, and the gang to help you have the best uh, experience that you can at Trent University. Now, you might ask yourself, you may find yourself sitting in your house, and you may ask yourself, why am I, is this guy from Trail College talking to me? I'm at Trent University. What's Trail all about? And so Trent is a collegiate university. So those people who have been to Trent before, or those people who may have uh, you know, been in Commonwealth countries or know of the collegiate system, know that a collegiate system, a university college is actually part of the bigger university. And at Trent, there are five university colleges. Now, the majority of graduate students are all part of Trail College. Now, if you're brand new to Trent, you are automatically a member of Trail College. If you've been to Trent before, you carry your traditional collegiate affiliation with you. And if you want to tr transfer over to Trail, hey, 
I'm cool with that. If you want to stay as part of your original college, that's okay too. But let me tell you a little bit about what TRAIL offers for graduate students. And we really do offer wraparound supports, especially for graduate students. Now, TRAIL is downtown. So we are very close to kind of the hub where a lot of students are living in apartments and and, and and that downtown. So that is our location. We're between London and Dublin Street. And there are several buses that come to trail, but the 11A is going to be your best friend because it is the one with a 15 minute service circle route that comes to trail. And you might then ask yourself, why bother with trail or any college? Well, there was a guy and his name was Mark Twain. Actually, his name was Samuel Clemens. And he said, I have never let my schooling interfere with my education. Now, the reality of that is he probably never said that because already he's suspect because he doesn't go by his real name, Mark Twain. He's really Samuel Clemens. And he says, I never let my schooling interfere with my education. It may be apocryphal, but that doesn't mean it isn't incorrect. What colleges do is they provide education around the classroom. They provide experiences that are interdisciplinary and intergenerational around the lab around the this classroom, around the spaces of learning that are formalized. And that's so important because that's where ideas happen. They're incubators of ideas. You need to talk to philosophers if you're in forensics. You need to talk to you know, cultural studies people if you're in environmental studies. These types of conversations make you a better person. And that's what the collegiate system does in any college at Trent, but at Trail, we're especially designed to help you out in that regard. And we provide the three S's. We provide spaces, we provide services, and we provide supports for grad students. And so what are the spaces? Well, there's one of them behind me. Let me tell you, when I, I, I was a grad student once. I have three graduate degrees. So, you know, I'm a glutton for punishment. And, a, you know, uh, some people call that a lifelong scholar. I call it a glutton for punishment, but I have three degrees. And the first one, my graduate supervisor said to me, Eamon, it's always good to have illustrations because it diverts the audience's attention from your face. So I'm going to show some of the, the, the images that I have to divert your attention from my face. And so behind me is Car House, part of Trail College. It's an oasis in downtown Peterborough, full of three centuries of settler architecture. Car House back here, where Canadian Studies is found, is our oldest building in the entire Trent University, built in 1852. But wait, there's more. There's Scott House, look at that. People are having fun, having picnics. That's what it's all about. It's about breathing this rarefied air of education together, but also having a good time. We have spaces such as, oh God, grand piano and music spaces that you can you practice in. We have a college library where you can hang out. We have a wonderful pub called The Trend, which serves food. And we have a lot of our graduate programming there. If you run into our undergraduates this year, the theme of orientation week is Lord of the Rings. So watch out, the, the one eye is watching, but let's go back to the pub because that's kind of a fun place to hang out and not get scared by uh, Tolkien's uh, uh, littlest eye. Trail has all these spaces for you. And that's important for being you know, a grad student. We have graduate only spaces too. We, if you're a scientist, you may go, why would I ever want to get outside of the lab? Well, come down to trail and you can write things up or you can read in our airy bright spaces and maybe bump into a professor or, oh my goodness, an art student. It could happen. You never know. So these are the types of things. We also provide services such as academic skills, and that includes academic boot camps, writing camps, a research, time management, all these wonderful things that help grad students. And let me tell you, time management is probably one of the biggest workshops you should be taking from our academic skills because it really is important to put things in order when you're TAing for the first time and going to class and trying to eat and keep your clothes clean and all those types of things, time management is important. So we offer all those types of workshops at, at TRAIL. We also offer supports, most importantly jobs. We have employment opportunities in the college and one of the biggest ones is continuing education which is run from TRAIL College and we hire almost uniformly graduate students to teach our lifelong learners. So if you have a specialty, if you have a language, if you're a painter, or you just wanna teach something in your subject matter, come talk to me and we can set you up for teaching lifelong learners, that's adult learners, through our continuing ed program. Now, I don't wanna go on too, too much long because there's a lot about trail. Please send me your questions, send them down, but, uh, type them in the chat or email me directly. But one last thing is that we build a sense of community and support. And 
the truth of the matter is no matter where we are and we're across the world right now, no matter what we do our, in our studies, we are all united through the belief that education will make us a better person. And when we become a better person, then we can get busy making the lives of others better. So Trail College, for every member in October, we have a scarf ceremony. Oh, it's, it's blending away. Let me get back to boring old normal. Um, what is normal these days? Boop. Is that normal? Uh, let's try none. There we are. This is our scarf. All colleges have a scarf, but this is the Trail College scarf, and it has a cool little Latin model. Now, don't worry, it's called Nunc Cognosco Ex Parte. Nobody speaks Latin anymore, really, so the pronunciation really doesn't matter, but it's Nunc Cognosco Ex Parte, and it means now I know in part. And this goes back to this point of we want to be better people, because when we know in part, then we need, know we need to know more, and we need to know more, and we know to, need to know more to become that person that can help others. And so you come in October for a scarf ceremony, and you too can get one of these limited edition Trail College scarves and join the club of not know-it-alls, because they're jerks. Join the club of know-it-sums. I want to know in part. I want to be a proud know-it-some and know that I'm on a journey of lifelong learning starting right now, right here at Trent University. So thank you for letting me take the time. Come down to Trail College, check out all the services and supports we have for you. It's worth the, the trip and uh, good luck. Have fun knowing in part. Thank you, Michael. Can you just confirm that bus? Somebody was asking, was it 11A that runs between Trail and downtown? There is 11A, which does 15 minute service, a loop between the battle library and here during peak hours. I'm not sure what <laughs> peak hours are right now, but uh, during peak hours, and there's the number six and the number two that also come near Trail and then go up to, to the main campus okay. and kind of go through the center of town. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, that was great. Thank you so much, Michael, for joining us today. Um, next, we have Dr. Nona Robinson, who is the Associate Vice President for Students at Trent. Nona, welcome. Thanks, Lori, and uh, welcome, everybody. I'd also like to echo Lori's land acknowledgement, and uh, I usually take the opportunity to also recommit to my own uh, work in uh, addressing systemic and current and historical systemic injustices against Indigenous peoples. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. I've been at Trent for nine years, love this place, came from the University of Toronto before that, where I was working at one of the colleges. Um, and, uh, you know, whether you're an undergraduate or graduate student at Trent, it is very much a personal education. Um, I did do a longer session uh, on student services that I think a number of you were at uh, earlier this week, and I, I think, Lori, we're posting it, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about student services, but I do want to uh, mention that I do know that uh, graduate students sometimes might think, oh, you know what, student services are for undergraduates. Um, we know that uh, graduate students also uh, might need uh, help and support, whether it's counseling or health services or careers or any of those sorts of things. Michael also mentioned academic advising and academic skills. Grad graduate school is a little bit different often than undergrad. And, and I think especially if you're coming to a new campus, sometimes it can feel a little bit disconnected. So I strongly encourage you to get involved with uh, TRAIL and your college, with the TGSA. Also, all of the, the clubs and groups are open to, to graduate students as well. Um, and I know too that, you know, connecting while you're in classes is a little bit easier, but sometimes when you start doing your research or your writing, it can be a bit isolated. And, and so making sure that you know, establishing and maintaining those connections is really going to be very valuable and important. I also know that many of you are, are working and, and or have family responsibilities. So juggling those different things can, be, can sometimes feel a little bit uh, overwhelming and we're all here to help for that. So I'm just gonna pop up very quickly uh, two screens. Uh, one is uh, just to sh show you the current students website. This is uh, uh, hopefully a very helpful resource for you, uh, just in terms of, Lori, can I just confirm, did that come up? I see some nods and-, and Sorry, yes, it is there, no, no, sorry, it's on yeah, me. Great. Uh, so all of the student services and a lot of other information is listed there. And another part of that uh, 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 website is uh, something that again, Lori, I think has been uh, sending out to people. We have a, an entire sheet of campus resources, um, just more or less organized by uh, general sort of area. So you see the TGSA is up there. Um, but uh, you know, just so that if there's anything where you're sort of like, I'm, I need help with something, but I'm not sure where to go or what to do, uh, just check out that sheet and hopefully that information is there. Certainly at any point, uh, get in touch with Michael or me or grad, the grad studies office. 
uh, we are definitely all here to help you. Um, the other thing, of course, is just, you know, keeping in mind that, uh, sorry, I'm just going to stop share, that this is, can be a really amazing and wonderful experience, um, and it can also be a very challenging experience, and hopefully it's going to be intellectually challenging in all the best ways, uh, but, you know, if you are running into any difficulty, we want to make sure that you're supported uh, during your time in grad school. Uh, so welcome to Trent. I hope you have a wonderful time here, and that it's a really amazing experience for you. Um, and I look forward to hopefully seeing you in person as soon as, as soon as possible. Thank you, Nona. Thank you for joining us again. I wanted to mention too, after Sebastian spoke that um, Sebastian was part of our first talk um, back on August 5th and Nona did an individual session for us. So they're more comprehensive information because this was just kind of an overall welcome and an overview of how they can support you. So yeah, be sure to look at our orientation website because they did already give us some um, lots of great information. So we really appreciate that. Um, so yes, thank you, Nona, for joining us again. and. Um, Dr. Kathy Bruce from the Research and Innovation Office. She's the vice president there. She is um, now going to say a few words about supporting graduate students from the research perspective. Thank you, Lori. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, sounds good. Great, good. Uh, well, welcome to Trent. Um, perhaps some of you are returning to Trent for another degree. Really uh, looking forward to, to seeing you and, and interacting with you. Um, so I'm Kathy Bruce, I'm the Vice President of Research and Innovation, and uh, I've been at Trent for almost 20 years. And here's one piece of advice I would like to share with you, and that is get involved. And I know you've heard that already, but getting involved is so important. Get involved with your research, research that you're passionate about, as Michael spoke to. Get involved with faculty. There are many faculty who are interested in you and in your interests and in, in furthering the research and expanding their ideas and get, get going more in depth with that research uh, alongside you. So I really encourage that and get involved with other students. There's so much to do on campus. You know, you saw the enthusiasm that Michael shared about Trail College. There's so much going on at the colleges that you can also get involved with. So that's my little sort of practical piece of advice. Um, I do have some slides I wanted to share with you. So I'm going to just go there now. Does that look okay? Yeah, yeah okay. So, um, I, wa I wanted to just give you a couple of pieces of information. I know you're on information overload by now, uh, but I think it's worth just letting you know um, what we're doing uh, in the Office of Research and Innovation. So uh, our mandate is to support the university community in its mission to advance learning through the creative interaction of teaching and research at the highest quality possible. We are responsible for achievement of Trent's research goals. And so I oversee research at Trent writ large, and that includes right from the individual projects through the centers and so on. And uh, uh, we also work in cooperation with departments, schools, and units to implement the research strategic plan. So here are the kinds of services that we can offer to you. We're the liaison institutionally to other institutions and groups. Uh, we can help you with grant support. Uh, we provide ongoing communications on, on usually on Tuesdays, but there's constantly uh, research updates and, and that includes social media updates as well. Uh, we build partnerships and try and, uh, for example, with the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry, that's an example of a partnership that we have fostered over many, many years. And so that creates research opportunities uh, that are very significant. We will also advocate for you in making those uh, connections. And we oversee and protect, and that includes um, we, uh, the Research Ethics Board runs through the Office of Research Innovation. It's an independent body, but we manage the coordination of that. And that's something that you'll face as you go into your research work. What can we do for you? We have some really interesting experiential learning opportunities. I just didn't want to miss these. The McLean Foundation is a 16-week full-time uh, work experience program uh, that um, is fabulous. It's research based. I want you to look for that. And it, any of these, all of these are, are listed on our website with more information. There's the Trent Work Study Program, which is very robust at Trent and offers all kinds of uh, 
working experiences. We have workshops and seminars. Two things on the horizon that I wanted to mention. The first is we're looking to establish a research administrator internship. So for those of you who might be interested in the research administrative side of things, we're going to work through the entire Office of Research and Innovation with students so that they have that opportunity to experience uh, what it's like to be in an Office of Research. And uh, we're also developing a micro-credential in knowledge management and communication that you can take alongside your degree and the work that you're doing. And it's very much about knowledge mobilization and making sure uh, you have a design and plan for your work. Uh, we also do some liaison work. My tax just got a new $7 million um, uh, fund. And what that is, is it's a matching program. So we match students and faculty with businesses. And uh, it's international, most of it housed in Ontario, but it's a very strong uh, program that is growing uh, beautifully. Uh, there's also the Northern Scientific Training Program. And as vice president, I have set up a strategic initiative fund for students. So all of those are available to you and worth looking into from our website. Uh, I just wanted to highlight where research is happening on so many levels uh, for you to consider. Uh, we do have institutes. These are very uh, organized bodies with you know, governance and boards and advisory panels and that kind of thing. And you may find yourself affiliated with one of those institutes. Similarly, we have centers. We have a water quality center. We have a DNA profiling and forensic center, um, archeology span research center, that James knows about uh, and, um, and many people are working across and in these fabulous places. So it's not just for one department. So when you're thinking about your degree and how it connects in, you can connect in across and have some opportunities to, to meet different folks and do interesting research in some of these locations. We also have groups, um, including uh, African Studies Research Group, for example. Um, and then of course, the individuals that are doing their, their research and that you will want to connect in with and probably already have to some degree. And so there's a lot of layers here for you to, to think about in terms of how you engage. Uh, we, I wanted to feature just two centers just to give you an idea. So we have a Trent Center for Aging and Society. And this center uh, prioritizes uh, uh, academic research, knowledge mobilization and community engagement. Um, they are doing such wonderful work around, for example, seniors and dance. Uh, there's, uh, there's a new long-term care facility in the, on the horizon. Uh, we will be doing research and teaching with the Center for uh, Aging and Society and with students, uh, experiential learning placements all wrapped around the Seniors Village and long-term care facility that's coming to Trent. Uh, so that's a very exciting area and pillar for education um, at Trent. Another example of a center on the sciences side is the Water Quality Center, which is the most comprehensive mass, mass uh, spectrometry facility in Canada. Uh, there's some fantastic innovative uh, methods development going on there um, and some new and innovative uh, techniques for measuring isotopes um, and inorganic and organic materials um, in water and other substances. So I just wanted to share those as examples. And lastly, to say, we're really looking forward to seeing you. And where are we in that map that James showed at the beginning of the, um, his presentation? The, uh, this is on the uh, Simons campus. That building that you see in the image is a, a NYing building. NYing meaning the way we speak together. Um, sometimes also, referred to as Zosky because Zosky College is housed in the NYN building. That's where we are on the second floor about where that red arrow is and we're looking forward to seeing you uh, at the research office. Uh, so that's basically what I wanted to share with you today. Again we have a very um, robust website with lots of information. Um, you should follow our Twitter handle which I should have put up there. I'll put it in the chat. And, um, and we look forward to connecting with you. Thanks. Great. Thank you so much, Kathy. So that kind of 
wraps up the formal part of our presentation. We're happy to continue to answer any questions and we can kind of do them out loud if they're relevant for anyone or if you have individual questions, you can type them in. Um, I do want to just tell everybody too that starting next week, our office will be open Monday, Wednesday, Friday um, for a couple of weeks. And then we're hoping to be kind of more full time after that, Monday to Friday, nine to four. So feel free to email us at any time. We're here to support you whenever. Graduate at trentnew.ca if you think of something after this event or just anything comes up or pop into the office and see us. We do have some lovely uh, School of Graduate Study masks and sanitizers. Come and drop in and see us and get a free little gift. Um, be lovely to meet you after all the communication we've been doing over the last many, many months. But um yeah if any more questions of any of our panelists that are still here with us feel free to pop them in and i can read it out loud and help everybody out with the answer it might help all of our participants if we don't see any more questions coming in we might laurie i was yeah. just thinking about the graduate certificate the graduate teaching certificate that's uh, another learning opportunity for graduate students through, I think it's joint work through the uh, Center for Teaching and Learning and Grad Studies. That's a fabulous opportunity. Again, another kind of a credential that you can add to your uh, portfolio as you as you build your skills. Mm -hmm. Yes, we did have a um, GTA session last week, middle to end of last week, and Robin did mention that and it went up on our website on Monday or Tuesday of this week. So I linked it onto our orientation website. So it's open for registration right now um, by our graduate students. And I think the day is September 10th in the morning. It's a half a day session. And yeah, it's a great resource for um, students to learn about teaching. If it's a brand new thing that they're doing this year, it will really help you um, settled into your new role. So that's linked on our orientation website. I think I put that right at the very beginning of the chat or orientation website and it's linked there. If you go to the GTA, jump down to that section, it's there. So yeah, thank you for mentioning that. Um, and I believe our recording from the GTA sessions also are already up. Um, let me just scan these questions here and see what they're about. If they apply to everybody, maybe we'll just have a quick chat about that. Um, we want to try to keep this event um, under an hour so we've got a couple more minutes um and anyone else helping me out with these questions if there's something relevant there feel free to jump in and and let me know too because i'm trying to see them all and quite a few have just come in um tax forms oh your employee number is your student number somebody is asking about how to fill those out um, you're in the BEMA program, you've not received your course schedule. I would just reach out to Jennifer Bull, your administrative assistant, about any course related questions. Um, uh, Somebody is asking about the GTA program. So I think this might have been mentioned, but I'm not sure. Um, the GTAs are something that are assigned when you get your offer. For, so they're meant for research-based students. So they're part of your funding offer. They'll show up on page two uh, of the letter that you receive when you're given an offer. Um, so for research-based students only, unfortunately. There's other jobs um, possibly available on campus, depending on what your area of study is. You can check out the undergraduate websites and sometimes they have um, various postings listed there. So you could try that. Including, if I can just jump in, including academic uh, assistance as well. Yes, thank you, James. Are, are designed for graduate students. Um, so we answered this one. Are opportunities available for only research-based programs? Can course-based students benefit? Yeah, so GTA is, I think you're speaking about GTAs. Yes, yeah, so those are only available for research based. But as James just mentioned, check out the undergraduate programs for like other positions like marker as an administrative assistants. Um, there could be other opportunities there. When should you receive the invoice for your tuition in our account statement? Um, I can speak to that if you'd yeah. like, Lori. Yeah, that I had would a be few great. questions about that. So finance is a little bit behind with the billing, but they are working on it. It should be on, we're hoping, by next week. Uh, and for anyone who's in a, a, re, a, a professional program uh, where the tuition was due September 1st, we've extended that deadline to September 17th to accommodate the late billing. So if you're watching your student account next week, you should see that going on soon. Great, thank you, Steph. 
um, information about Durham campus. Oh, I haven't mentioned this yet, but we have confirmed um, we're going to have a really comprehensive orientation about the Durham camp campus next Monday afternoon. I believe it's at one o'clock. I Sorry, I've got a lot of times going through my head. It's definitely next Monday. The information's all on our website. I believe it's at one o'clock. So that's going to be covering everything from athletics to library to academic skills, everything you need to know about the Durham campus. So for any management students that are online, that would be a really useful session for you to join. And that will be our last orientation session. So Monday afternoon. Um, so hopefully that answers that question. Um, for the person who's arriving late due to flights, um, I would just be in touch with your program about when you'll be coming. Unless you have a GTA, then you can also let our office know, a graduate at trentu.ca. Um, I'm not sure if you've registered for online classes or in person, but yeah, it'd probably be best to speak to your program. Um, do you anticipate that in-person learning as currently scheduled will go ahead for the fall and year? Um, so do you want to speak to that stuff for James? Like, as far as I understand it, um, a lot of classes are in person right now. Our classes that have a large majority of international students for the fall are I think all online, maybe there's a little bit of in person and no decisions have really been made for the winter, but maybe if there's you want to expand on that, that would be awesome. I think it's uh, program specific at this point. Sorry, James, go ahead. <laughs> nope, go ahead, Stephanie. It's program specific at this point. Go ahead, Stephanie. You... <laughs> That's what I was going to say. It's program specific. So if you're not sure, I would reach out to your program just to confirm um, how your classes are going to be delivered if you haven't heard from them already. To register for the Durham session, just answering another question here, just go to the website, to the orientation website. It's posted right at the top of the chat. Um, and, and that session I didn't mention is actually going to not be in the webinar format. So I created that one more like a meeting format. So you can actually see all your classmates. You'll be able to see people and, and talk. So that just a little different to help to get to know your classmates. Um, I think that might be um, the end of the questions. If not, we'll just, we'll stay on and answer. If there's still a couple more, we'll just type them in. So thank you. Thank you to everybody, to all of our panelists so much for joining us today. Thank you to the students for coming to Trend and choosing to come to our school. This has been um, a really great event. Thank you to everyone. And like I said, we're open next week. If you have questions, please feel free to drop in, to email us. Um, we're here to support you. Um, if anyone has anything further to add before we sign off, then do you have anything, Steph? No. No, I was just going to say if our panelists want to uh, sign off, our team can stay on and answer some more questions that are rolling in here. Yeah, for sure. That's a great idea. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. Really appreciate your time. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.